Hi everyone, welcome to the 11th lecture of the series. So in this presentation, I'm going to introduce the second optimization operation on transducers, determinize, determinization. So let's get started. So this is uh, where we are now. We are at the second operation uh, of uh, optimization. So before we move on further, we have to understand the concept of a non-deterministic finite automaton. So to put it informally is that if a, a, if a um, a, a finite automaton is non-deterministic is when the input right, um, ends up in two possible states uh, or, or more than one possible state. So for example, if you, if you consider this, uh, this uh, non-deterministic transducer, you realize that if you were to have an input of AB, uh, you, you, A, B, you can either end up in state 4 or A, B, you end up in state 6. Right? So you can't determine where the, uh, the, the input is going per se. So that's why we, we, we call this uh, type of transducer a uh, non-deterministic uh, uh, finite automaton, right? So this would be the determinized version of it, right? Uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's much more clearer given an input AB where it will end up, right? Because namely one of the possible reasons is because there's only one particular end state here. So what's the rationale of, having, uh, of uh, performing determinization? Well, suppose a finite automaton is determinizable. A one good uh, advantage is that um, it accelerates all search time uh, across the uh, transducer, right? Because basically all transduction problems can be reduced to a search problem, and uh, if you have a less redundant path, your search is definitely going to be faster, right? So this is one of the uh, huge rationale behind uh, uh, determinizing, and that's why it's also known as a step in optimization, right? So um, I'm going to introduce the algorithm uh, in a very uh, casual manner, right? Uh, because the actual algorithm itself can be quite scary. So to put it simply is that given a uh, a non-deterministic transducer, right? The states we, you ha that have the same input will be grouped together. The, the transition, sorry, right? Uh, will, will, will be grouped together. And then if you have multiple uh, end states, you'll be grouped together into a single state. Um, so this would uh, ensure that we have unique having uh, unique paths for unique inputs, right? It, it, you, you can basically be able to figure out where, where your input is going to go, All right? So to elaborate further, let's do a small example. Now suppose you're given this particular acceptor, a weighted finite state acceptor over a tropical semi-ring. So the first thing to do is to uh, initialize the uh, initial node with a weight of one bar, right? In this case, uh, a tropical semi-ring, one bar, the uh, multiplicative identity is uh, zero, right? So this state here will have will be zero, and then we're going to compute the total weight of a, a given input a. Right? Why? Because we we are focusing on all the 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 uh, the transitions with the same input. So in this case, it's e1, e2. So uh, the weight of e1. Right, you just take the weight of uh, this the initial node multiply by the weight of the transition. So in this case, it's one bar times one. Uh, algebraically, it will give you one, right? And then uh, the the second transition, the weight of the second transition will be one bar times two, which gives me two, right? Then after that, after we've determined all the transitions that have input a, that requires input a, we're gonna add them up together and determine the new arc weight. The new arc weight, of course, so one plus two gives me one. Right, because the tropical semi-ring, the addition, uh, the addition operation is defined as the minimum uh, function. So the minimum between one and two is one. So one plus two is one. So this new arc weight is one. So what do we know now? We know, right, that this arc originates from, initialized from zero, has a residual weight of zero, right? Um, has a input of a weight of one. Now we need to find out where it ends up. So the process of finding out where it ends up is is that we have to start by computing what is known as residual weight, right? So you take the weight of the, the transition, multiply by its the weight of its initial state, multiply by the multiplicative inverse, right, of the uh, the arc, the new arc weight. So in this case, the new arc weight is one. So the multiplicative inverse is minus one, right? Minus one. So so consider the residual weight of E1. The residual weight of E1 would just be right the minus one minus one plus the the weight the weight of the initial node which is zero, uh, the weight is zero, right? 
plus the weight of this transition itself is 1. So minus 1 plus 0 plus 1, right? Or in, in the case of algebraically, it's minus 1 times 0 times 1, and that's equivalent to 0, right? And then the residual weight of the second transition is minus 1 plus 0, uh, well, plus 2, right? Because the weight of the second transition here is 2. So minus 1 plus 0 plus 2 gives me 1. Then we have to figure out where it ends up. The E1 ends up in state 1, E2 ends up in state 2, right? So what happens is that we will take this and group with this, and this this state group with this weight. So so you can see that I've grouped this together, and you will see 1, 0, 2, 1. The first number will represent the weight, uh, sorry, the state, and the second number will represent the residual weight, which is the the you, what you calculated here, zero, and 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 uh, for for the state two, the residual weight is one. State two, the residual weight is one. I repeat that again, All right? So the new transition is that we 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 know where where the everything originate from, what's its input, what's the new arc weight, and where it's going. Hence, now we can begin to update, right, our WFSA. So once updated. Now we know that it starts from 0, 0, ends up in 1, 0, 2, 1, right? Has an input of A, arc weight of 1. So now, this is the first update. So followed by, uh, we do the same thing again. Now we are at, at state 1 and state 2. We're going to consider everything that has the same uh, input. So in this case, well, it's clear, it's, it's just B, right? If you have others, you have to consider others. So in this case, it's a simple example. Uh, the the in common input is B. So then we have to calculate again the, the weight. The weight of E3, I call this uh, transition E3, this transition E4. Using the same thing again, what is the weight of this node here? The, the weight of this node is, uh, well, you can, you can just take a look here. The weight of state node 1, state 1, is 0. So 0 times 3 gives me 3, right? And the weight of this state here is, uh, is 1, right? Yeah, you see? The weight of this state here is 1. So, you, so 1 times 3 gives me 4. So 3 plus 4 gives me 3, right? Remember, we are working over tropical semi-ring, right? It gives me 3. So this new arc weight is 3, right? So what we have, we know its original state. It starts from this state. It has an input of B, weight of 3. So now all it's left is, where does it go to? So again, we start by computing the residual weight. So this, this itself, it's the weight of the transition, the weight of the initial node of the transition, and then the the new arc weight that we found out, right? This is the multiplicative inverse of the new arc weight. So the new arc weight in this case is three. The multiplicative inverse is negative negative three, right? So minus three. So let's consider E three. So minus three times the the weight of this node here is uh, zero, right? So minus three times zero times the weight of this transition is three. So minus zero times zero minus three times zero times three gives me zero, right here, right? Then E4, right, this transition here, this transition here, you take the, the multiplicative inverse is minus 3, right, multiply by the node, this, uh, the weight of this state here, which is actually uh, 1, right, 1. So minus 3 times 1 gives me 2, right, 2 multiplied by the weight of this path is, uh, uh, multiplied by the weight of this path is 1, right. So now, what happens is, uh, it's minus 2, minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1, good. So then we'll go group this 1 with 0, 2 with 1, right? 1 with 0, 2 with 1, and I get this new state, right? So now I know it starts in this state, it requires an input of B, has a weight of 3, and it ends up in this state. So this is the new transition, right? So this transition will be this little little uh, arrow here, right? It starts on this, goes through here using B, and then uh, has a weight of 3, and co comes back to this the same transition. So we're gonna consider we're gonna consider this again, right? Everything that comes out from these two transitions, right? All all the same node, uh, all the same same input. Well, there isn't any other input other than C here. So we can consider this uniquely and we will do the same evaluation again. We will put C, right? So so uh, the weight of this is zero times five gives me five, right? So the new outweight will be five, new outweight will be five. I need to know where it's going. Right, so I compute the residual weight. So the new arc weight is five. So the multiplicative inverse of the new arc weight is minus five. Right, the weight of the initial node of uh, e e five here is one, and one has a weight of zero. Right, so so it's minus five times zero, and the weight of this arc here is five. So minus five minus five times zero times five gives you zero. Right, and then it ends up at stage three. So I'm gonna group three with zero, and it gives me 
the destination state uh, the new destination state so this is the original uh, uh, initial state it requires C as an input has a weight of 5 and a new destination state of 0 update this and you get this little green arrow here right do the same for the last one do the same for this particular path considering or everything that uh, that requires input D right so remember uh, the weight of this this the, the, the residual weight of state 2 is 1 which you, you can recover here all right state of 2 is 1 so 1 times 6 gives me 7 so the new arc weight is 7 so the new arc weight being 7 I need to know where it goes right so start again by compute taking the uh, the multiplicative inverse of 7 in this case is minus 7 so minus 7 times times the state the, the weight of this state is 1 right so minus 7 times 1 times the weight of this state is 6 so minus 7 times 1 times 6 gives me 0 right and after that uh, it, I know that the the end of this path is 3 right it, it ends at state 3 so 3 I will group them together 3 0 it forms a new tuple and this is a new state so now now I know that it starts from this particular state requires D as an input has an imp has a weight of 7 and ends up in 3 0 so I'm going to update this, right? Starts at this, requires D as an input, has a weight of seven, and it and it ends up in three zero, right? And then finally, I can recover the, the a determinized form of the finite state acceptor, right? Now one of some of the bad news is that not that um some for some transducer this uh, this algorithm may not terminate, right? It may not finish for with some input even if they are valid, right? even if there is no epsilon transitions and so forth, so on and so forth. But but good news is that all finite state acceptors are determinizable. Now um, there are other properties that will be they will, they will guarantee a transducer to be to be uh, determinizable, but which I will not cover it in this lecture, right? So if you want to read more on the uh, on this particular algorithm, the uh, the the determinization algorithm uh, you're advised to read up on this book uh, using this book the weighted automata algorithms by Mori right uh, as usual if you have enjoyed this lecture I hope uh, I'll see you again in the next lecture thank you